When it comes to financial advice, you got to trust the source. It's why you listen to this podcast. When I'm looking to upgrade my wallet, I turn to NerdWallet. Their expert team of nerds dives into the details to help you find smarter financial products. Before NerdWallet, I was paying for vacations all wrong. (laughs) I was missing out on miles. I didn't even know I was leaving on the table. Now I've got a new card with more miles and more upgrades. What could future you do with more travel rewards? I don't know, maybe that fancy hotel upgrade that you have always been dreaming about. Wherever you go next, make it happen with a smarter travel credit card. Don't wait to make smart financial decisions. Compare and find smarter credit cards, savings accounts, and more today at nerdwallet.com. NerdWallet finance smarter. As with all cards, credit is subject to lender approval and terms apply. Millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am. But Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. Hey, friends. Welcome to Millennial Money, the podcast where I, Shauna Compton Game, get to chat with some super inspiring people who will inspire us all to get up, take back our bank accounts, and chase after the life we want to live. And oh, wow, this is a great episode. Anna is a fellow certified financial planner. In fact, she was named a virtual force by Morningstar. Pretty awesome. And her mission is to teach you that you don't have to be rich to create a roadmap for your money. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. You're already one of our biggest fans of the pod, but I want to invite you to go deeper behind the scenes with me every single month. Get all the scoops on what I'm loving, catch up on popular podcast episodes, and check out a video with a money tip in each monthly email delivered straight to your inbox. Plus, since I'm a big fan of having dessert first, I'm going to send you an exclusive bonus podcast episode, five minutes to recite your money mindset when you sign up as an added treat. Head over to mmoneypodcast.com and enter your email address in the box on the homepage to sign up. Again, that's mmoneypodcast.com. I can't wait to see you behind the scenes. One big common misconception is that you have to have a ton of money to start doing cool things with your money, like growing it or giving it a direction. And that just simply isn't true. And I really, I'm not even sure how that started, but I think it needs to go away because it is causing so many people to not want to take action, to not do any steps that are going to help you grow in the direction of the goals you want to achieve because there's just looking at their bank account saying there's nothing in it. If I can share something about myself, some of the best money moves that I have made is when I didn't have a lot of money, but I knew I needed to be really intentional with the money I did have. And when I did, good things really started to happen because I had this plan in place. So Anna is also working to blow up that myth. As I mentioned, she is a kick-ass certified financial planner, the president and CEO of Main Street Financial Planning, Inc., the nation's largest fee-only hourly project-based financial planning business. And even though she became a CFP, she still admits that she made all the possible financial mistakes as a young adult. And her career goal really is to help you understand that you do not need to be rich to start working on your own finances. So I hope you love, love, love this episode. Just a quick note. There were some audio technical difficulties on her side of things. So bear with us. Listen to the interview. I promise you're going to get a ton out of this. You are passionate about a lot of the same things that I'm very passionate about, but one of the things is 
teaching people that they don't have to be rich to create what you call a money roadmap. Before we dive into what that is, I'd like to start out with what do you think are some of the biggest myths that people believe when it comes to money that really hold them back? Totally. And I am actually excited that we align in the same passions here. But as far as um, what's holding people up, and I've uh, I've been in financial services for the last 15 years and kind of seen um, a lot. Um, and I think the biggest one for sure is that most people still believe that they need to be rich um, to start working on creating some kind of a, a plan, yes. some kind of a strategy for themselves. And they kind of wait and wait and wait and wait. And like, okay, well, one day I'm going to have enough money. And the definition of rich is um, varies for everyone. But it's like this point where, okay, now I can finally start uh, talking to a professional. But I also think um, the idea here is that the way that our industry is set up and, and, and structured and, and targeted towards uh, people to have a certain amount of money to be able to work with a qualified financial planner or there's products that are being sold. So there's, you know, confusing messages there as well. Um, so it's easy to kind of have that idea um, that, you know, uh, quality financial advice isn't for me. Um, but it's really the opposite because in order for you to get to that rich point, right, or financial independence, or however you define that success, right, financial success for you, you've got to start, um, you know, getting help because um, it's complex. Um, you're going to get stuck along the way. And so you're going to get there faster if you had some kind of a assistance and help. Um, so yeah. I think I think looking into that, what is really holding you back? And why do you think that you've got to have uh, you know, the money in order to work with uh, a professional advisor. And you make such a good point because I think everyone, if we asked 10 people or even 100 people, if we lined them up and we asked them what their definition of rich, they would all probably tell us a different number or a different variation of that. And I think that message is really important to share with people because as you know, money is such this, this isolated experience. And because we don't talk about it, we don't realize that maybe we're all more alike than we are, are different. But I mean, I think the idea around being rich, particularly with all of the different financial technology apps and tools that are out there, that's definitely changing. Are you, are you seeing that as well? I am. And it's, it's actually been an interesting ride in my career to see how even short 15 years ago when I started, we had none of this technology, right? It was really, um, really still basic. We had the internet access and, 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 you know, and clients came to see us in our office. Yeah. <laughs> none of this was like podcasting wasn't that popular or it was, I think it was just by maybe starting to gain ground. Um, so the way that we even interacted with our clients has changed so much, plus all of these uh, technology tools you're talking about, all right. of this is just enhanced and allowed. This is the, 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 re, you know, the point that everybody needs to realize. It allows everyone to actually have access and be able to start working on creating their own financial success, right? Whether it's maybe getting out of the debt or figuring out how much money to save or just really um, looking at this money picture from, uh, you know, from all kinds of angles, which is to me exciting because it's just, it just opens up so much opportunity. Look at how um, we make money these days, all of these right, side yeah. hustles out there. I mean, it didn't exist even 15 years ago, like Uber wasn't there, right? Or you couldn't deliver <laughs> groceries just to make a few bucks on the side. It's amazing. And I, I'm actually very excited that I've got to see along the way how it, you know, what changed for my clients, what changed for all of us, right? Because you and I are just like everybody else. We're in the same boat. We're figuring out all of these, all of these things, even though we're certified financial planners. So it's, um, it's an interesting ride for sure. Yeah, yeah. I always say that just because I'm a CFP and I have expertise does not make me immune from <laughs> having, you know, done some of the biggest money mishaps. And I like to share that too, because that message isn't out there that we, we've all done crazy, silly things that maybe we would regret or change, but you know, we can all, we can all learn together. So I want to go back a little bit to this idea of the running money roadmap. Tell me a little bit, what is this and, and how can we create one of these for ourselves? Yes, totally. Um, so 
just coming from all of the you know all the years that I've created financial plans for clients and really thinking uh, just a little more outside the box, I kind of came up with this idea of what if it wasn't a financial plan? Because for most people, again, still mm. that notion that you can't get one because you don't have a lot of money, um, no one will work with you. What if it wasn't the financial plan that I was really thinking? What if it was just a, a, a map, a roadmap to help you make decisions? And you know what? Like the picture in my mind when I'm thinking about that is, again, thinking back in the day when we just started to be able to use internet for like getting directions. Remember Map uh, MapQuest? You <laughs> yes. Print- <laughs> You print in a couple of pages because you wanted to go, uh, you know, somewhere. So I envision the same thing for, for laying out a strategy, right? Or like an outline or a set of instructions. Like if I wanted to achieve this financial goal, how would I do it? And, and so the idea of the roadmap is, is to actually help you precisely figure that out. Um, and so I kind of expanded on what we've been doing uh, for our clients. Um, and um, as far as how you can actually get it, we're uh, starting to run a, a, an interesting challenge. The first one is launching next month, September 2nd. Um, and it's actually precisely set to help you create your own money roadmap. So you, even if you thought you can't work with a professional, this is something that you can start doing on your own. And the neat part about it is that it doesn't matter whether you're just starting out or you made some progress in your you know, finances or you've you know, really accomplished something, something big, you can always take one more step, right? You can always like, level up. You can always improve. And over, it's a 28-day uh, time frame, four weeks. And we, we dive in you know, really deep yeah. with various topics. Um, the first one of them being mindset. And I, I love this, this, the behavioral part of our jobs, right? As financial yes. planners. So we got to, got to really work on that because a lot of notions are still there and people aren't quite, you know, on the right path. We, we, we talk about how you, you know, get organized. How do you really have a grip on your spending and if you're earning extra incomes uh, from various sources. If you have debt, this is a big one. This is, I think, the biggest roadblock or, or myth up there that just because I have debt, there's nothing else I can do and I really got to focus on that. Yes, true, but there you can be working on a lot of things at the same time. I am big on setting financial goals, like real financial goals, not just, oh, I wish I would have something, right? Or I wish I could retire it age 55. No, it's really precise. It's really targeted with specific numbers, specific dates. Um, and just the, the, these are just a few things that we will yeah. work over this, you know, 28 day period um, as you take in this challenge. But um, it's definitely going to be challenging because it's supposed to be that way. And so once you come out at, at, at the other end, you're going to have things that you never thought you could work on because, you know, just because it's, it's, it takes time. But if you put in this time frame and you have financial experts working side by side with you and a really awesome community, a lot of things can change. For sure, for sure. And I'd love to back up just a little bit. You talked about the mindset, and that's something I talk about a lot on this show because I feel like it's skipped over so much. We want to go straight to like, what are the 10 steps I need to do this or that or whatever it may be without really really understanding how we think, act, and feel about money and then how that then translates into the decisions we're making. So I'd love for you to just talk a little bit, even just from your own expertise or working with clients, like how have you found that that mind piece to be so important or, you know, have you seen when people change that then, like other things change in their finances? Most definitely. I, I, I really believe that that's the first um, to address with anyone, whether you're even just looking at what, you know, what kind of questions we've asked for clients or we, if we worked with them over a number of years, that was always the big piece. And I think it comes down to what are your habits, right? And what are your beliefs about money? Because that's, it's almost like this iOS running in your, in the, you know, in the back <laughs> of your mind, right? And I always make fun of it. I mean, we try to simplify it, but it's like, okay, well, can you give, can you start working on getting an upgrade, right? For your own money scripts that you're running in your head. And I, to give like a few examples, for example, growing up, and this is something that happened in my family, um, but 
I didn't have very much background or understanding of, of how to manage personal finances and, and, you know, what, you know, what it really meant to me and what I saw growing up in my family. And, and it, 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 we, my family immigrated in early nineties to United States. And the idea always was, okay, how can we make enough money to make sure we can survive? That was the right. goal. And that's all I learned from my, from my parents. And so imagine what that kind of, you know, instilled in my mind, obviously, right, good work ethics and everything, but that's it, right? I didn't know anything else. Um, and once I got exposed to the world of what happens, you know, once you get your own money, then all those mistakes, right, and troubles came along because I wasn't equipped with the right tools or, you know, I didn't have the right habits. And I believe those things are changeable. You can always work a little bit at a time on, you know, changing those ideas in your head. And so if you've always believed that the only way to success is to work hard, I'm using my own example, then (laughs) that's, you know, you can work hard, but is it really going to get you far? Right. And so I think looking at looking deep inside um, and seeing what is it that you, why are you doing certain things a certain way? Or why, for example, some people don't like to have debt, right? Or they view that as a, as a bad and evil kind of thing versus others. I mean, look at, look at it from the opportunity standpoint. Can I make more money? Can I leverage, yeah. right? Can I use other people's resources um, to help me get there? So that's that's the angle that we like to explore with clients and and see what is it that's holding them back because if we don't address that at the beginning there isn't any kind of really advice that's going to make a difference because if you like if you're stuck like at one point you aren't going to jump over and the only way is to work through it. Yeah, that's that's human nature, right? For all of us like we get to those stuck points and we don't always want to do the kind of necessary work that we need to do to really un- not just unstick us in this particular instance, but to really change that habit or that pattern. And I think just as humans, we don't like to do that. And so I think, you know, like really being able to nurture people around that is so important. Yes, exactly. And I think it's it, it goes, um, you know, because when we create financial plans or call them roadmaps or financial strategy, any any names you want to have for this really to help you achieve the financial success, it goes around not just your own habits, but those around you as well. Right. And and the kinds yeah. of messages you send sending and, and, and issues, for example, couples have with finances because. Um, you really got to understand where it's, somebody's coming from. And a lot of times it's so, um, it, you can't even control it. It's so, it's sort of, sort of, so automatic that it, it's, 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 it's just astonishing to me to see that. But if you become aware and you really start focusing on those things, and there's a lot of different tools that you can use to, you know, to, to, to get comfortable, right? Or to start yeah, making sure. decisions that are, not working against you. Um, it's almost, it's, it's a very freeing kind of um, point once you get there and you start looking back and say, oh my gosh, I've uh, really made progress. And I think on another angle here, a lot of times people can't make progress, right? Because of those beliefs or those habits. And they just sort of stuck in that little, you know, red race per se, trying to get out. Right. <laughs> I've definitely been in one or two of those myself over my lifetime. We'll jump back into the episode after an Ask Shauna that comes from Pam. And Pam says, Hi, Shauna. Thanks for taking time to answer my question. I'm in my early 30s and I'm thinking about making the switch from full time to self employed. I've tested my market and I'm pretty sure I've got a good idea and that I can get clients. Would love to tell you my idea, but I'm keeping it a secret for a bit longer. Anyway, I'm curious how much money would you suggest I have saved as a backup to ease my transition? Is there a specific number or any guidance you can give? By the way, I totally appreciate your podcast and love all your entrepreneurial stories. I feel like you don't just preach. You have also walked the walk. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Well, first off, Pam, uh, thanks for the compliment. (laughs) Just trying to be honest and share what I know about being an entrepreneur since it has been my entire career except a really brief stint. And it's a really brief, probably three or four year stint that I worked for a company. And I tell people now that I am 
allergic to fluorescent lights, which of course I'm not allergic to fluorescent lights, but I just don't like the idea of sitting in an office and being in one place. I My brain is all over the place and I like having lots of projects. So that's what works for me. It doesn't work for everybody. So I think it's really important first for you to figure out, A, if you're the type of person that can handle the entrepreneur life because it's not easy. There are a lot of pluses. Sure, I get to travel whenever I want and I can go to doctor's appointments and I can take a nap if I need to. And there are lots of reasons why it's great. I mean, for me, I love the unlimited income potential that I can literally make as much money as I try to make. (laughs) It doesn't always work out that way. But there are downsides, of course, too. I'm responsible for my own retirement and uh, got to pay taxes, got to keep track of all my business expenses, constantly fighting for opportunities. There are a lot of things that I fail at or a lot of things where I'm up for a big project and the company says no. I mean, there's just... There's a lot that you have to be able to stomach, and it's not for everyone. But if it is for you, uh, I think it's a great, it's a great opportunity to really change things up for yourself. So I'm a big fan of saying, look, if there is some way that you can save up nine to twelve months of your must-pay expenses before you quit your job, that's going to put you in a really good scenario because. Understand that the first year in business will likely be a loss. Not always, but most of the time you're adjusting, you're adjusting to the new expenses. Maybe you go a little crazy with spending extra money or taking time off, things like that. But usually the first year, maybe even the first couple of years can be a little bit rocky. So having nine to 12 months worth of expenses saved It just gives you a place to not relax, but to feel a little bit like you can handle the ups and downs that come with the first year because you have enough money to cover those expenses. Of course, the the closer you get to the end of that time period is really when you need to figure out, is this working or is this not working? Another thing, I always put my work savings in a high yield savings account, something like a Marcus or an Ally account. Make sure that you're earning interest on that money. Even if it feels like a small amount of money, it's more money than you had if you just put it in your bank account or you put it in your bank savings account that is not paying you any interest. Another idea is to use a program like FreshBooks. That's what I use. Or QuickBooks is also great to manage your expenses. So you're really going to want to stay up on not only your personal expenses, but your business expenses. And I found that business expenses, particularly in the first couple years, that's where things can get a little wonky. So you really want to make sure you stay on top of that. You're looking at those each week so you can manage, okay, I think I'm going to get this much money this month against this is the amount of expenses I'm going to have. Lastly, I would just say, be nimble. Be able to switch up your idea if it isn't resonating with your customers. And so many people get stuck in like, this is my idea. This is what I want to do with my business. I I am not changing. But a lot of times the customers are saying, "Mm, we don't want that variation. We want this variation. And so you really need to be nimble and flexible and be able to change things up. That's certainly something that's been very advantageous to me in my career is I've had to shift a lot uh, different times or for different projects. And so just being able to do that, I think, is going to be a really big asset for you. I, I want to mention one more thing as well. I watched a great course on Creative Live. I don't know if you guys are fans of Creative Live, but they have some really awesome online classes. And I watched one called Build a Standout Business. It was incredible. It was really amazing, helped refine ideal clients, refine your messaging, refine your branding, create a business plan, all that good stuff. It was only 79 bucks. And seriously, I think this course was at least worth a thousand bucks. That's what I would have paid. So if you're looking for something to really brush up, make sure your business plan is super solid, I would highly suggest it. I'll put a link in the show notes as well so you can click on over. I get absolutely nothing for recommending this course, except I just recently went through it and I was so blown away with how amazing it is. So long story short, Pam, I think 
just focusing on saving as much money as you can because you don't know, even though you think you have a good idea and you think you have customers, until you actually have those customers and they're actually paying you money, everything is just in theory. Listen, if you've been using Mint to manage your money, I have got some news for you. First, the bad news. As you might know, Mint is shutting down for good. But the good news, well, there is a way better alternative that is a personal favorite of mine, Monarch Money. And I'm not the only lover of Monarch Money. Many Mint users are turning to Monarch Money and just raving about it. I used to manage my money with an Excel spreadsheet. I know, so archaic. And it was so time consuming. I tried all of the apps but I just didn't find one I liked until I found Monarch. And I've got to tell you a secret. Monarch is so easy to use with a very intuitive design. You can even collaborate with your partner and you can customize Monarch for whatever your needs are. Monarch is the top rated all-in-one personal finance app. It gives you a comprehensive view of all your accounts, investments, transactions, and more. Create custom budgets, set goals, and collaborate with your partner. And now get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com etm. Let's go back to the collaboration bit. Because we know money is a leading cause of divorce and breakups, Monarch has built in collaboration features so you can invite your partner at no extra cost. You can see all your finances, make a budget together, get insights on your cash. Yes, cue the confetti. There will literally not be any more arguments over money. And if you've been frustrated with personal finance apps that are cluttered with ads, difficult to use, or rarely updated, so was Monarch. They built a new kind of personal finance app that's intuitive and powerful ad-free, and constantly improving based on customer feedback. Monarch has a tool that allows you as well to easily import your data from Mint. You can keep all of your tags and all of your categories. After trying Monarch for myself, I understand why it's the top-rated personal finance app. And right now, get an extended 30-day free trial when you go to monarchmoney.com slash etm. That's M-O-N-A-R-C-H-M-O-N-E-Y dot com slash etm for your extended 30-day free trial. Fargo, the new virtual assistant from Wells Fargo, makes banking faster and easier. Like this. Fargo, what's my checking account routing number? And this. Fargo, uh, turn off my debit card. And this. Fargo, what did I spend on groceries last month? And that's just the beginning. Do you, Fargo? You can in the Wells Fargo mobile app. Learn more at wellsfargo.com slash getfargo. Terms and conditions apply. Your mobile carrier's availability and message and data rates may apply. Wells Fargo Bank and a member of DIC. You know that business idea that you've had that is lurking in your head? I think it's time you breathe some life into it and make it a reality. Take it from me, someone who's been creating business ideas for over 20 years now. For me, it all starts with a name. What are you going to call your new business idea or company? Once you've got a stellar name in mind, head quickly over to bluehost.com to register your URL and set up your website hosting before someone else snags your amazing name. I have over 25 URLs registered on Bluehost just in case I want to use them in the future. And what I love about Bluehost is how affordable it is to register your domain and get your website up and running fast. With my special URL, bit.ly slash Bluehost Money, you can register your domain name and set up hosting for your website all for only $3.95 a month. That's less than a cup of coffee to start building your business empire. Again, head on over to bit.ly slash Bluehost Money to get this special offer. We've all spent more time with family lately. It can feel like old times, but your mind is on the future too, and what you can do to shape it. At Sandy Spring Bank, we work with clients to help them grow and protect their money with wealth management, trust services, and insurance, so they can enjoy today and ultimately pass along their wealth. We believe real banking is a conversation. Let's talk about your dreams. Visit sandyspringbank.com slash wealth. Wealth and insurance products are not FDIC insured, not guaranteed, and may lose value. I'm super curious, though, c- coming from a different country and seeing, you know, America, I guess, from a, from a different view than those of us that, that were born here. Have you seen or, or I, I guess this is this is kind of an opinion thing, but, uh, you know, what were those sort of first impressions you had about you know, Americans and, and how we deal with money? I'd be curious if you had any thoughts on that. 
Yeah, interesting question. Well, I was I was a teenager. I was fifteen, so I wasn't really you know sure, yeah. a young kid, but um, not quite an adult yet. The first impression I had, and again, I was thinking about this, you know, looking back at all what happened in my life. Uh, still that notion that, you know, when I saw how, how hard my parents worked um, to provide for my brother and I, and when I looked around, I, I was just amazed to see how many opportunities, um, you know, there are here in this country to earn money. And one of the things wow. that I really wanted to, I was when I, once I turned 16 and I could drive, I, I wanted to get a job and I did. And even though I could get, you know, five, five twenty five an hour, that was amazing <laughs> amount of like, it was huge amount of money for me because I just, I, it was just exciting. And so where I came from that, that didn't exist. Um, and I, I think that really shaped the ideas in my head, right. Uh, growing up as a teena- teenager here until I um, really you know, graduated from college and had a real job. Um, that anything was possible. And uh, yeah, that that's still, I remember those days, right? Um, I, and it's just, I think it really changed um, of how I looked at, at finances. Of course, I had no skills. I didn't know what to do <laughs> with that money, but I just knew I wanted to have it because I could buy things that I didn't have, right? Or my parents wouldn't get for me. I love that perspective because I think we lose it often, the opportunities that we have. And sometimes even when we find ourselves stuck or we're feeling limited by the salary we're making, it's it's reconnecting to that idea that there are lots of different opportunities. It may mean stepping out in a different way, but we're not we're not necessarily stuck where we're at. So I love that perspective. Oh, totally. And I, I think that also sort of laid the foundation for me that one day, and I had no idea that, um, you know, by age 30, I could actually own my own business, right? Because that maybe those uh, practices or those, you know, experiences that I had as a teenager, right? And kind of the um, sort of ingrained in my mind that, okay, I don't have to be stuck. I don't have to do it a certain way. I want to do it my way and I want to do it differently. Um, so that allowed me to, you know, not only excel as a financial planner, uh, working with clients, but also as, you know, as a business owner and just in my career as well. Yeah. So what what then led you to a career in personal finance? Yeah, it was it was really actually not a straight shot. I, I still <laughs> I think you probably know, but uh, in our like our profession isn't still quite recognized as something that like kids will say, "Oh my gosh, I want to yes. grow up. I want to be a financial planner." <laughs> I had no idea, like I really zero clue of what that was. But I the one thing I really always wanted was um, to work with people, and then so my path on. Uh, and, you know, to do that was really pretty straightforward. You become a doctor, uh, and that's kind of what I had in mind. And halfway in, in college, I actually switched majors uh, from taking all the biology and chemistry classes to business because uh, the, the building next door uh, where, you know, all my classes were in sophomore year uh, was, you know, business school. And I was just fascinated by it. Just, it was just something that I didn't even have exposure. And I I thought "Hmm, I could be a businesswoman, right? So those ideas were, it were kind of uh, swirling in my head and I did switch and I had a, a, you know, I had to pick a a concentration track. So it was finance, it was corporate finance. And once I graduated with that degree, it was a really big uh, decision point where I'm like, well, what do I do with this degree? Like, what's the <laughs> path for me? Like, there's a the set career, right? Like, with becoming a doctor, you know exactly what you're going to do. The kind of job is going to be there for you with, with what I had was just a sort of a world of, with opportunities. And I had a chance to, or I had to have an internship in order to graduate. And that's kind of how I got exposed to the world of financial services. But that was really more on the investment side. I worked for a brokerage house. And so that was like real hardcore selling stocks, selling bonds, which was a great experience, but I learned pretty quickly that wasn't for me. Like I didn't enjoy (laughs) that piece. And doing a little bit of research, I found... Um, I found or learned more that this there was you know that there was this whole other world over here from you know extension from you know investments into the personal finance and that's kind of how I started and in, in getting you know involved with taking classes and um, and so it sort of picked up from there. Pretty much all my career has been in in financial services, but more or less um, it, it's been focused really heavily on financial planning. 
Right. Yeah. And I know even as a woman in financial planning, uh, there's not a lot of us, we'll say. <laughs> there's no, not a lot very, of us that are, that are under, let's just say, the age of 50. Uh, and it's a really interesting career path dynamic. Uh, I mean, there's lots of different ways you could go with a financial planning expertise, let alone just having the knowledge yourself. But, you know, what do you see on the horizon for women in this career? What if somebody's listening and they're thinking about a career in this? What would you tell them? I think I, if I could, I would just stand on the top of my roof here in my building. It's only, <laughs> it's only two stories tall, but I would still do it. I would, I really am passionate about having more women understand that, uh, you know, a career in financial services, you don't have to be a certified financial planner, but it's an awesome, awesome experience. And really, um, I think it's an honor to be one, right? It takes a while, but it, it creates this, um, this idea that, you know, women can and should be advisors, right? Or financial planners. And they're actually innately good at it. It's just our yeah. kind of nature, um, that, you know, that God has given us, right? To take care of, of other people. And because money is such a, such a sensitive topic, we, I think women do uh, much better. No offense to guys, but women do a much better job on that front. And if those of you who are listening out there, you need to explore, you know, what, what opportunities are there. And interesting enough, these days, there's actually, you can get the sort of the CFP designation while you're in college. It didn't exist when I was um, getting started. So it's even better. You can graduate with a degree, I think, in financial planning. Yes. And have the, I, I'm pretty sure it's, it's, uh, I know that you can take all the courses and then take the actual exam later, but it provides, first of all, it provides, you, you know, you an opportunity as, you know, as a woman to use the skills that are really innate to you. I, it also is a great career track. There's lots of flexibility and I can speak to that, not just being, um, you know, my own bo boss these days, but I also have a seven and a half months old son. And so I was, you know, that just wanting to have a family and career and a business, all of it is possible. And, and it's the other, the other neat part of this too, is that the people and the clients that you get to work with that you can't replace like the, sure. the lives that you change, the relationships you create. Um, I'm sure you could do that in other professions, but I, I don't know any different. So I'm a little biased towards, <laughs> towards the side of, uh, of, you know, how you actually can help people. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So much good information there. And I think it's kind of like this secret almost because when you have a, if you're a certified financial planner, you have some sort of financial planning expertise, there's so many different ways you can use that. I mean, we just think of maybe one or two ways, but that knowledge and those skills can go in so many different businesses, let alone if you just start your own business, but you have that background and expertise, it can really be quite transformative for your entire career. Oh, totally. I think it you like the one understanding that I think listeners should have just because you're certified financial planner, you don't necessarily have to be working in that role for, I mean, for, for, for what, you know, for the most important piece, make sure your own household finances are in order, if anything, right? Because that's yeah. the kind of the starting ground. And then just, there's lots of different ways of how you can utilize those skills. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I really had a traditional career path just because well, that's the model I saw. Um, and it's been great. It's been great for sure. But I've, I've been really striving out there to find other ways to not necessarily just, okay, I'm just an advisor and that's all I do. <laughs> There's other ways how I can share what I like to talk about, which is all of these topics, right? We're discussing today in different format. Press plus the, the technology these days, all of this is really, really, really enhancing that. Yeah, yeah, I definitely love it. Well, I want to talk to you about about something else. I know you host a show on Facebook called The Money Date Show. I've talked a lot about money dates on this podcast. Probably people are tired of hearing me talk about it, but it's, I think, so important to just check in on what's going on with your money because that's how you spot trends and patterns. You can make changes, all sorts of amazing things. But I'd love for you to just dissect a little bit why should we have these money dates? And I guess, how do we even do these? 
Yeah, it's a good question. And I, like you, have been preaching this idea of um, you know, dating your money, right? Because everybody gets excited when they kind of hear, you know, a word date and it's, <laughs> it's supposed to be fun and sure. So I, I, I thought to myself, well, um, I had to have conversations with my spouse, right? With my significant other. And if the dates were, were things that we're really excited about, I wanted to insert the word money and just to kind of slip that in and maybe have a conversation. But in our family, it really, it really is simple. And over time, um, we, we wanted to have consistency to our our discussions and we still continue doing this actually just yesterday uh, was one of you know, our money weekly money date. We do it on a weekly basis, but we really um, chat about a couple of things that keep us focused um, on what's important um, and what, what's important to us. But I, but I also believe these things should be on our radar for everyone. And that's really what I cover or, you know, remind my listeners are on our money date shows every Wednesday um, to focus on. So here are the things that you yeah. and I discussed yesterday. The first one, to make sure that we stay, um, you know, on the top of our expenses. We're not, you know, we're not budget people. Like that's another interesting part about, you know, my, uh, you know, own practice, even though I'm a certified financial planner, I don't really budget, but I do have a really good grip on what our expenses are. We use mint.com and they're a ton of other apps. I'm not advocating for one or the other. This is what worked for me over the years, but because it just gives us a real time picture, right? Where the money has been spent, how it's all sort of, you know, from the debit card, from the credit card. So I really have a good idea of what our expenses are for the week. And I really practiced this over the years, but, and found that weekly chats are much better than waiting yes. you know, until the end of the month. So much better because you can, you can, you can catch things, you know, some, somewhere along the way, um, you can plan better and it does, it's not, it does not take enormous amount of time at all. It's really just a conversation because I can whip out my phone and have a, an idea right away, right? I open up my app and I look at things because my husband and I are both business owners and we are on the variable income. We really have to kind of you know, be on, on the lookout for what's, what's going on, right? And weekly conversation about that too. So what is our right. income looking like? Are we going to really make it this month, right? Can we pay ourselves <laughs> a salary, right? If we can't, then what do we do, right? And I have a structure for that too. For example, uh, many of you listeners probably have heard this from you, but I'm a new blood, so I'm allowed, I think, to talk about emergency fund, right? Like how healthy is your emergency fund um, in, in order for you to, you know, withhold whether it's variable income you're on or it's some kind of a uh, thing that comes up in your life. Maybe you had a, uh, you know, a car accident or the roof leaked and you need to come up with, with extra money. So I'm big on that, right? If we have to tap into our uh, emergency reserves. And then the third piece is really remind ourselves what are you know are we staying on track with our financial goals and what i mean by by that it's not only because our savings are set up on automatic basis right everything goes into a certain account it's all um, configured even though we if we may not have a great month as far as our income goes right or for example it's not even not having a great month sometimes for my husband because he's on commissions and works in real estate it takes a while to get paid um, we still need to adjust and make sure that our uh, savings are uh, staying consistent right so but that's that's more uh, automatic than anything we don't really have to discuss that too much but what we really do have to discuss is revisit and talk about whether we're still interested, right? And still um, as passionate about our financial goals or uh, do we, yeah. are we going to make any adjustments, right? And that's been really powerful for both of us. And, you know, something else that we've adopted over the years, but these are more personal practices. Each of us um, writes you know, our own personal goals every day. And so he has things that he's focusing on. It's not just about finances, whatever, personal, you know, physical goals and things like that. And so when you kind of doing that, right, you're sort of a little bit in isolation because you're focusing on you, right, and your own things you want to do. But if you have that conversation once a week, right, with your significant other, it helps you reset. And it's really, really doesn't take that much time. It's, it's more yeah. about... Um, doing it consistent on consistent basis. And, and the other part of the money date show, it's really, cause I love all kinds of financial planning topics, right? Or money topics. I just thought that if I can remind every, everyone to do these things, 
Um, and I'm sort of like a broken clock, um, <laughs> but it, it helps, I hope, um, uh, because it helps me to be centered. And then I can just talk about a funny, you know, a, an interesting uh, topic for that, for that week. Um, hopefully that brings more value uh, to folks because we know that financial literacy isn't uh, at the top, um, in this country. No. So we, <laughs> we need to work on that too. Yes. We need all hands on deck for that one. That's right. Well, Anna, this has been so fantastic. So much great information. I'd love for you to tell listeners where they can find you, connect with you, and where they need to go if they want to sign up for the Money Roadmap Challenge. Totally. Well, Money Roadmap Challenge is moneyroadmapchallenge.com. Uh, the first one, the first round uh, starts September 2nd. So if you're interested to, uh, in doing it in September, sign up for that. I'm on social media. We have uh, Main Street Planning uh, Inc. Uh, website on uh, or page on Facebook. And you can also find me on Instagram. And my handle is Anna, number eight, and my last name, Sergunina, S-E-R-G-U-N-I-N-A. Wow. I can just really relate to Anna's story. And I love that she admits to making all the money mistakes. You know, I'm honest with you, and I'm more than happy to admit that I have done the same and that most people have, if they're going to be honest. That's why I just, I really believe in this idea of creating a money roadmap because you can't, you just can't go wrong. It's like if I was trying to drive from LA to New York and I didn't have GPS or I didn't have a roadmap, how in the world would I know where I'm going? I wouldn't. I might eventually get to New York, but it would take me twice as long, if not more. So the same thing with your money. You need to give it direction. Thanks so much for checking out this episode. If you love what you heard, please, please, please head on over to iTunes. Leave us a five-star review for the podcast. It's one of the best ways to show some love for us, and it's how we get more Millennial Money listeners to tune into the show. I'll see you back here on Tuesday for a new episode.